I would consider this just another tool that we can utilize in our toolkit to improve human health. What's up guys, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So if you do not care about your health, please do not subscribe to my channel. So ultimately in today's video, what I'll do is take a look at some of the benefits of essential oils and also go through some of the existing research that is you know, quite impressive when it comes to improving human health. So of course, we firstly need to ask ourselves this first question. What are essential oils? Essential oils are complex substances consisting of hundreds of components that can vary greatly in their composition depending upon the extraction process by the producer or the origin of the plant. Now, there are many different essential oils on the market and one thing that we really need to prioritize is quality. And so, when it comes to various essential oils, it really does matter about you know, how the particular oil was extracted and also how it's stored. So what I wanna do is take a look at some of the unique benefits that essential oils can offer. So you're probably wondering if there's any real science behind essential oils or aromatherapy. And I did come across this really amazing diagram that basically, or table that breaks down the different benefits of various essential oils for treating a variety of different conditions. Um, this particular table was captured from Aromatherapy and Essential Oils, a map of the evidence, and this was published in 2019. And we can go through the top, starting from anxiety in healthcare waiting spaces, different types of anxiety, then we've got using essential oils to help with complications in hemodialysis, helping with depressive symptoms, dysmenorrhea, so menstrual issues. We've seen that essential oils can be applied um, for nausea and or vomiting, so post-operative conditions. Essential oils can help with a variety of different pain conditions, which is obviously beneficial for that sort of population group. And then we can also see how you know these essential oils can affect some of the uh, physiological parameters, such as blood pressure. We can see systolic blood pressure, SBP, and diastolic blood pressure, or also known as like hypertension. So we can see that, you know, there's different degrees of evidence in which, you know, these essential oils can work for various conditions. But one thing I want to point out is that it's quite difficult for, you know, researchers to conduct these double blind placebo controlled trials with essential oils because, I mean, how, how are you going to mask, you know, various, you know, placebo oil versus active oil? Very difficult because the participant usually knows which one's the actual essential oil. But the whole point of this slide was to basically illustrate that there's mixed evidence when it comes to using essential oils to treat a wide variety of conditions. So this one here I really wanted to highlight is how sniffing this particular oil can boost adrenaline levels in the body. And I'm sure many of you know the effects of high adrenaline, some of the effects that you might notice if you have high baseline adrenaline levels. But I'm just gonna read a snapshot from this particular study. Fragrance inhalation of essential oils such as pepper oil, estragon oil, fennel oil, or grapefruit oil resulted in a 1.5 to 2.5 fold increase in relative sympathetic activity representing low frequency amplitude of systolic blood pressure compared with inhalation of odorless solvent triethyl uh, citrate. In contrast, fragrance inhalation of rose oil or patchouli oil caused a 40% decrease in relative sympathetic activity. Fragrance inhalation of pepper oil induced a 1.7 fold increase in plasma adrenaline concentration compared with the resting state. While fragrance inhalation of rose oil caused a 30% decrease in adrenaline concentration. So we're seeing you know, different effects from different oils in terms of how they affect the sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system. So in this particular situation, as an athlete, maybe it's worthwhile using an essential oil such as 
uh, let's say in this situation, pepper oil, which can cause a 1.7 fold increase in plasma adrenaline levels. And then perhaps maybe if we're trying to promote sleep or relaxation, then we'll lean towards like rose oil, which can decrease adrenaline concentration. So that particular study was titled Effects of Fragrance Inhalation on Sympathetic Activity in Normal Adults. So I found that really interesting how, you know, just simply by inhaling essential oils, we're inducing a physiological effect in the body. We're seeing reductions or increases in sympathetic activity in the body. So I'm sure many of you know about this particular essential oil. We're looking at rosemary. So sniffing this particular essential oil can boost and improve our memory performance. The study was titled, Aromas of Rosemary and Lavender Essential Oils Differentially Affect Cognition and Mood in Healthy Adults. And what they noted was that rosemary produced a significant enhancement of performance for overall quality of memory and secondary memory factors, but also produced an impairment of speed of memory compared to controls. Perhaps rosemary can be best utilized for context dependent memory states. And this is actually something that I leveraged, you know, during my university degree, I was actually using rosemary essential oil to act as a contextual sensory effect that every time I smelt that oil, it would evoke and trigger some of the same memories during that period of study and then be able to retrieve and access those memories, you know, post three to four weeks later. So I found that really interesting how we can use essential oils to improve memory performance. And this is obviously, this would work really well in conjunction with a lot of the nootropics that I talk about on this channel to improve memory such as PRL 853, methylene blue, paracetam, oxyracetam and other compounds that you've heard me talk about. I wanted to also highlight this particular study that looked at the anti-anxiety properties of various essential oils. Now, this particular study was titled Effects of Inhaling Jasmine Essential Oil on Anxiety and Blood Cortisol Levels in Candidates for Laparotomy, a randomized clinical trial. You can see here that the materials and methods, so there were about 84 subjects in the study that were randomly allocated into two intervention and uh, control groups. And what they noted was a massive reduction in the anxiety score for the group receiving the Jasmine essential oil. And they noted pretty dramatic decreases in cortisol, which is obviously a marker of stress and even anxiety. So we're seeing a beneficial effect simply just by inhaling jasmine essential oil on anxiety. So that's pretty impressive there, thinking about combining, you know, a, maybe a jasmine essential oil with let's say L-theanine and maybe some magnesium and glycine to have a potent cortisol lowering effect. Now, I just wanted to finish up by mentioning this one danger associated with essential oils. There is one essential oil that I do not suggest men utilize at all, and that is lavender essential oil. Now, research has shown that lavender oil has been associated with early breast development in girls. Lavender and also tea tree oil are also thought to lead to a condition called prepubertal gynecomastia, um, which is abnormal breast tissue growth in boys. There was one particular doctor that advises against diffusing lavender and tea tree oils because of the potential complications, particularly in children and teens. Pregnant women and people who have hormone related medical conditions such as diabetes should talk to their doctors before using essential oils. So key point here is avoid lavender oil. It may be estrogenic and also factor in that we really want to avoid ingesting essential oils without you know proper guidance from an aromatherapist because some of these oils can be very toxic if ingested hopefully you learned something new in this video this is you know to broaden and and, and sort of expand our toolkit we've got supplements we've got diet we've got stress management we've got you know exercise but now we can you know use things like essential oils to, I guess, biohack our sensory olfactory system and use them as performance enhancers and improve our quality of life. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.